Watching Good Morning Britain now, like millions of children across the country, little Gabriella Zagari Ratcliffe will be starting school next week. Yeah, five year old Gabriella has just spent her first Christmas with her dad, Richard, since coming home to the UK from Iran. Her mother, you'll remember Nazanin, is at the centre of a diplomatic row. She's been jailed in Iran for almost four years on spying charges that she denies. And Richard Radcliffe has been constantly campaigning for her release and joins us now. It's good to see you. Every time we speak, Richard, I always hope that we've got good news to talk about. And I guess, albeit bittersweet, it was good to yeah. have Gabriella with you. Oh, I think that's very fair. This is sort of the first time I've been on with a bit of good news, mm. which was we had Gabriella back for Christmas. Um, yeah. And I've been on in the sort of kind of an ossified, atrophied, not really celebrating life for a while, and suddenly we had a real Christmas with a real little girl who was five and a half and, and was busy enjoying Father Christmas. And how did she enjoy it? Yeah, no, great. I mean, bless her, she was very wary of Father Christmas, and the idea of a strange man coming into the house in the middle of the night mm -hmm. obviously felt there was, you know, certain concerns. But, but, yes, we put the stocking out in the living room, very pleased with what came, very pleased with seeing all her cousins and all the excitement there is of carol singing and everything else. And, yeah, it's been lovely having her back. And does she understand what Christmas means in the way that a father five-year-old who hadn't been through what she did and hadn't been out of the country for so long, because I guess culturally it's a big thing for most five-year-olds, but maybe she's missed out on a bit yeah, of Yeah, that. that's right. She didn't really remember it from before. So certainly when we had an advent calendar, it took a few days to get in the, And then, you know, by the end, she certainly had a clear sense of it. And there's chocolate to wake up um, to. <laughs> chocolate and motivate. And, and certainly just, um, I mean, she's got a very clear sense now of, uh, you know, <laughs> we're already sort of beginning to talk about when's Christmas coming again. And of so course, on. quite right too. I guess the thing for you all, though, was, of course, it was... Nazanin's first Christmas without Gabriella being mm. there as well. So that must have been very difficult. It was really tough for her mum. Um, and, and actually, we got a phone call on Christmas Day. We got one on New Year's Day, which is when we have a big family party. And, and of course, she was then stuck in prison away from it all. And actually, she happened to be on hunger strike on both occasions mm. in solidarity with a, with a, a British Australian prisoner. So y that doesn't put you in a very good mood generally. So, so yeah, she was fairly flat. Um, it, there's a way in which, of course, life is moving on for me and Gabriella and not for her. Yeah. And that has its own challenges. So, <coughs> what is the situation? You know, I think the last time that we spoke to you, certainly, I don't know if you've been on the programme uh, other times since, you were hopeful of a meeting with Boris Johnson. There have been promises made. I think you've since said you feel that those promises haven't been delivered. What is the next step for you? I think that's probably all, all where we are still. So, so, yes, we've had a promise of a meeting, but no date yet, so it'll be important to meet with uh, the Prime Minister as soon as possible. There's obviously baggage in, in our relationship with the Prime Minister over the years, back when he was Foreign Secretary. Um, so he rather unhelpfully mistakenly described Nazanin as a journalist, so, so which the, Iran then used against... Then used against her in a second court case, mm. um, and then scrambled in ways which made things more complicated. Um, so there's definitely, you know, in all honesty, I think he owes us and, and should sit with us and explain. And, of course, there is that wider context that's sort of breaking this morning, mm. um, where things are getting much worse again between the US and Iran, but also between all of us and, and Iran, which, you know, I sit here partly worried what that means for Nazanin, partly worried what that means for my in-laws sitting in their ordinary living rooms in, in Tehran, where they're, they're all really worried, and probably just wanting mm. to sort of meet with the Prime Minister to understand what, well, you know, what's going on, how are we going to solve this from our perspective? Have you, uh, you and your family and, and, and the people around you have, you, have you sort of charted a path to how you may get Nazanin back, how you might get her release? Well, we, we tried lots of things, and broadly, I mean, I was, you know, have been calling for a, a tougher line with Iran and saying, listen, you know, you have to make it clear that it's not OK to hold innocent people and use them as leverage, and, and that's still our position, but you need to be in a context where it's, people can listen to that. I, I think this morning, things mm. are much, much more... Uh... So you're referring to the, this morning the US strikes which have killed the, the mm. senior member of the Iranian government or senior ally and reporting directly <clears throat> into the supreme the leader, uh, General yeah, Soleimani. Yeah. Um, so his death and other key figures as well... Um, did your heart sink? Did you think, well, this is a point where I can get in and use this as leverage? What, what were your feelings? Yeah, not as instrumental as that. Like, I think, so, General Soleimani, who was killed uh, overnight, is the person who's in charge of the Revolutionary Guard, who mm. are the people who hold Nazanin. So there will be a kind of a working out for that institution, what they do and, and then what that means, and, and there will be, for all of those of us who are caught in the middle between Iran and the West, um, it'll be more difficult. Um, quite what that means, I think it's really hard to tell um, and probably a bit premature to be, to be pushing it. Mm. But, yeah, I think it... You know, how do we get out of this situation? Goodness knows at this point. Uh, um, generally, my job is to keep knocking on the door of the Prime Minister and saying, listen, you're responsible for protecting all of us in all the different ways you can. 
you need to keep... keep it just keep seems relentless for you, uh, Richard. Mm -hmm. And we had the, the, the fact that, as you say, Gabriella was with you at Christmas, but then, of course, the news you're waking up to this morning and the battle is still going on for you and the family to get Nazanin back. How do you stay positive? How do you stay optimistic? Yeah, well, sort of the recharge of having her home, um, the, the recharge, in fact, we, we had a great sort of event where we carol singing, where we had lots and lots of friends and family came. And different things where we sort of almost keep alive the sense for her that, that there will be a life afterwards. Mm. Mm. For me, there'll be a life afterwards. There's different ways of doing that, but, yeah, you, you have to keep... We've spoken a lot as well to the, the family of Harry Dunn and mm. seen the reaction of key members of government to their campaign mm. and their cause to see what they see as justice and having the person they think, you know, killed their son and beloved um, nephew, grandchild, brought to justice. Um, when you see that reaction, I'm sure as a human being you're glad for that family, but do you feel a certain sense of anger and frustration that you haven't had the, that public support? No, like, I think we all, we all battle in different ways and I think they've, they've conducted themselves with great dignity and, mm. and, and, you know, really achieved great results, which, which are important for their family but also for all of us. Mm. Um, I think government needs to be pushed and held to account and some issues are, move more quickly than others, but, you know, I, I'm in fair play to them. Mm, absolutely. Well, look, Richard, we, we always appreciate you coming in and, and hopefully we're helping you share the situation as it is for you and that helps in some capacity.